Hello, my name is Frank. Welcome to Learning in Technology. I'm glad you're here. When you think about collaborating in a classroom or a boardroom or teaching in a classroom, what do you normally think of as being your primary tool in order to convey ideas? Well, a lot of us remember the blackboard or in today's world, the whiteboard. Well, Microsoft has done a great job of taking that whiteboard experience and creating a digital equivalent, the Microsoft whiteboard. There's a version for Teams and there's a version that stands by itself. And that tool is really useful for conveying information and collaborating with other people in our teams. I have several videos on this channel where I go through the mechanics and teach you how to use that tool. In this video though, I want to talk a little bit deeper about how we can take our whiteboard experience of presenting information and collaboration and really turn it from a great experience to an excellent experience when it comes to collaboration. A little bit of advanced preparation and a couple of little tricks that I can show you from my experience working with the tool will really go a long ways to helping you with your presentations as well. Using the tool is one thing, using it effectively is a little bit extra. And in this video, I hope to give you a little bit extra. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like. And if you want to subscribe for more tips, not just on how to use technology, but on how to apply it to get the most out of it, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Share it with colleagues that could benefit from this and comment down below if there's anything I can do to help you become more successful in using these tools effectively. Thank you so much for watching and let's go have a look at using the whiteboard for effective presentations with a little bit of extra preparation in advance. In this video, I'm talking about using the whiteboard for effective presentations. So again, I have other videos where I talk about some of the mechanical elements of the whiteboard. Let's look at how we could use it for effective presentations. So I'm going to open up a new whiteboard and there are a couple of concepts that are really foundational to using a, a whiteboard effectively. In fact, the digital whiteboard can often be even better than an in-class whiteboard because of these extra features. So first of all, I'm going to go down to the bottom here. And you'll notice underneath the bottom here, I can insert text, I can insert a sticky note, I can insert images, and then I have a whole bunch of other objects that I can insert. And these are all very powerful while I'm working with the whiteboard, but a great way of working with those is in advance of giving my lecture, preparing a little bit ahead. And this here, I refer to it as the insert and move menu. And if I grab my mouse and press my mouse button down, I can move this palette around. Now I'm going to go to this icon and that's going to allow me to go into inking mode. Here you'll see all of my different pens. I can again change the color. Um, I can go in, you know, use the ruler. There's a whole bunch of tools in here as well. But this is where I'm actually drawing on the whiteboard. So let's go back to the insertion menu here and let's oh, actually sorry. Let's go back to the pen menu here and let's let's look at a couple of concepts. Now, from a hardware standpoint, I actually do have a little drawing tablet that I use, a little Wacom drawing tablet, and that makes my handwriting a little better. But for here, I'm going to draw a square. Now, imagine that this square represents the visible area of the whiteboard. What I'm going to do as an instructor is I'm going to create a palette of resources, whether it's a text, an image, a sticky note. I could even have a complex element like several, uh, you know, text uh, notes together or a little list or a grid. And I'm going to put those different elements to the side of the whiteboard. And I'm going to have them oftentimes in sort of the order that I'm going to use them within the lecture. And when I present the whiteboard to my students, I'm going to present this visible area here. And what I'm going to do is as I'm working with the whiteboard, if I need to bring an image in, I'm going to take advantage of a feature where I can zoom in and out. I'm going to drag that element in and then work with it in the visible area. This is maybe a little easier seen than just explained. So let's have a look at this in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fresh whiteboard just so that we have a fresh environment as if I was preparing a lecture a little bit in advance of presenting it to the class or collaborating with my class on it. So let's go ahead and pretend that I'm going to give a lecture where we're preparing a camping trip and we're going to talk about the different systems of camping. So I'm going to go to Bing images and I'm going to grab some elements here. I'm going to get an image of a backpack. Now I'm not the world's greatest artist, so this is a really handy way for me to get a visual element that's going to come in handy for my discussion. 
I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a tent. So let's grab an image of a tent. Grab that tent there. And I'm going to grab an image of a nice campfire. So we'll grab a campfire. And I'm going to grab another image of, let's say, camping food. Let's see what Bing gives me on this. Well, not too bad. So we have some camping food there. I usually eat out of a bag when I'm camping because I go hiking. So I'll do a marshmallow. Okay. So here are some different visual elements. I want to use these as part of my lecture. Well, if I take my mouse and I use the center wheel, notice my mouse icon and notice as I scroll in, I zoom in and you can see the percentage increasing. And when I zoom out, you can see the percentage decreasing. I have it at 100% here. You can see that in the center of the screen. What I'm going to do is, while I have this selection and move menu, I'm going to move my canvas here and I'm going to take each of these visual elements and I'm just going to stack them into, you know, I'll call it my image repository or the images I'm, I'm planning on using. And I just kind of scroll them over there and you might say, oh, they're, now they're over there, but notice I can put them off screen. So now they're off screen and I have a blank canvas area. And let's add some more elements in there. Let's go in and we'll add in something like a note grid. So here's a little note grid in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll out. So we'll scroll out and I'm going to put that over to the side here, maybe to this side. And I'm kind of thinking this area in the center is going to be where I'm going to present, but I'm going to stack different resources to each side. So when I present, once again, I've got this nice blank area. This is what my users are going to see. And maybe I'll go ahead and I'll put in some text elements in there. And maybe I'll just paste in something from the internet. So this here is a piece of text about a campsite on the West Coast Trail. And I'll just go in there and we'll put that over here as a resource. I'll stack a bunch of resources. Now when I'm stacking these resources, one of the things I do like to do is leave the top clear. And the reason for that is because if I run out of room in my presentation view here, I'll use this as the new fresh blank area of the whiteboard. So let's scroll in. So now I have a nice blank canvas here. This is a blank canvas and this is what users will see. Let's start a meeting and share out this whiteboard. Okay, so I've started a meeting. So I've got a meeting in a, in a channel called meetings and I can share out the whiteboard. I'm just gonna go to the whiteboard. Now, another thing that I could do is I can go out back to my main menu for the whiteboard. And you see here, this is the whiteboard that I just created. I could also go into this whiteboard here and invite people to collaborate. But for now, I'm just gonna go in here and, and leave the whiteboard like this. I'm in the move around menu and nice blank canvas. And I'm gonna go into my team. So now that I'm in my team here, I'm going to go into sharing. And you'll notice there is the built-in whiteboard. I, that is good for little short conversations or ones where I'm not really preparing my presentation in advance and I don't need as much features or functionality. I'm actually going to share the full whiteboard, the full application. And now I'm sharing out this full whiteboard. Let's bring a team member into the meeting so we can see what they see on their screen. Okay, so here's my team member and you can see they can see the whiteboard. And what I'll do is just on my screen here for this demonstration, I'll just move their whiteboard over here and you can see my whiteboard here. And I'll switch back and forth between the two. So, or I can even, well, we'll, we'll just switch back and forth. You can see they can see the whiteboard. So if I do something, I'll just demonstrate if I draw a circle on this whiteboard. And if I go back to them, you can see the circles there. So I am sharing the whiteboard. But now what's interesting is, let's say I want to begin uh, my lecture by talking about backpacking, uh, backpacks. I can just scroll out quickly, scroll out quickly, grab that backpack and notice I drew a line. That's because I didn't switch menus. So I'll undo that. I'll make sure I switch menus and then I can drag the backpack. Now I did that by mistake, but it's a fortuitous mistake because that's why it's important to get familiar with switching between those two uh, menus. So now I'll scroll in. So I scroll in and center that. If I go here to my participant, they saw me scroll in and scroll out, but now I've refocused their attention to our conversation about the backpack. And then I could say something to them. And again, I'm going to switch to the inking menu and I'm going to grab a pen and I'm going to say, how do we back a backpack? How do we pack a backpack? And we'll say down below here is where we want to put food and fuel 
because it's the heaviest and if we get a fuel leak we want to make sure that it doesn't go above our food we want to make sure that it doesn't get our clothes or food uh, compromised so fuel should always be at the bottom of your backpack and then you can have layer of heavier stuff here then we want to have things like clothes and sleeping equipment that are in the middle of the backpack and then at the top we want easily accessible things like rain gear and our first aid kit so that's just a, a typical example of how to uh, pack a backpack and you know and then here we you know things that we need right away like water filtration and maybe you know a map or whatever the case may be so this isn't actually a video on how to camp but it gives me a conversation that i can have with people and then let's say okay we want to talk a little bit about sleeping so again i can scroll out i can grab the sleeping again switching my menu dragging in the tent and scrolling back in so that my once again my participant is focused on the meeting at hand or the topic at hand and then i switch back to the pen menu and i can say what are some important things about sleeping bags and tents and people might say oh i think you know the uh, let's erase that there so i'll just undo that I'll, uh, they could say things like you know the color is really important and i spelt it the american way uh things like the uh, size is really important the weight is really important i'm you know i'm brainstorming with people i'm coming up with ideas and i say have you thought about something like the rf rating how warm is that particular uh you know uh, tent and then people could say oh you know and then we have a conversation and then i could you know we could have that type of conversation i could scroll out and maybe I have some text over here that speaks to the RF. So I'll grab my other menu and I'll drag in the grid and we'll talk about, you know, the important elements of what makes a tent, you know, effective. And we can, you know, one, two, three things that are important. We could add notes. You see how I'm, I'm moving around and I'm keeping, and I'll just scroll in a little bit. I'm keeping within my visual field, those elements that I want to work with my audience with and I'm just letting the other elements sit off to the side for when I need them. Now this is a very effective way and when I prepare my lecture in advance like this I'm not having to go through the process of searching for things. I've kind of pre-searched, I've pre-populated elements that I want to use. Now let's say somebody says well what about sleeping bags? I didn't prepare for a sleeping bag conversation. So I don't have an image of a sleeping bag. So what I can easily do is in the meeting, just go in here, grab a Bing image, and I can quickly say, okay, for that one, I'm gonna look for a sleeping bag because searching for a sleeping bag is actually a lot faster for me than actually drawing a sleeping bag. So that was a lot quicker process than me trying to draw a sleeping bag. Now, the reason I keep the top of the field clear, so again, scroll out, you'll notice my assets are on each side. And by the way, you know, I can go in and grab in if I want, back, change menus, go here, select, pull in text about something, so I can grab the text in there. I can even drop the text into a note. But, um, so you can see that, and it also gives me sort of a visual of how far along in the lecture I am. But if I go in here, the reason I keep this top part blank is because that becomes my infinite canvas. Now, if I get too far up to the top, I might start losing where, you know, these images down here, but hopefully I've sort of planned my lecture out so that I have those quickly available to me and I can just scroll in. And again, we can have the audience see that conversation and even participate through the sharing. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in and I'm gonna end my meeting now. So we're going to hang up the meeting here and that'll stop the sharing of the whiteboard and such. I just want to show you that once I've done my lecture, I actually have a copy of that whiteboard and I can go in, I'll go back here and I can go into the ellipse here and I can now give this a name like, you know, lecture for December 18th. And now I've got a name for that lecture and this is the post lecture whiteboard of course if i'm preparing things at home the night before i could prepare all of my assets on here and then i can just go in and say you know lecture on camping and then of course this is not currently used so to speak i could populate it with the images and such and then in the morning when it comes time to share the whiteboard i can share this specific whiteboard all ready to go all the assets there for me ready to roll
I hope that was helpful in terms of not just thinking about using the whiteboard from a technical standpoint, but actually using it from a functional standpoint. Well, what did you think of that? Comment down below and let me know. I'd be very interested to know what your experience is with using the Microsoft whiteboard in teaching and collaboration. Like the video if it was useful for you and subscribe and of course share with colleagues. And I have some other videos on the channel that might also be of interest to you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.